All right, let's talk about the sit and reach test. Ross and I uh, dusted off this. It was in our back storage office. Literally had to dust it off and scrape it off. I haven't performed one of these on someone since probably 1996. Good times, but wanted to talk a little bit about that. So let's watch Ross go ahead and perform a sit and reach test. We've already adjusted the base. Now I've instructed Ross to keep his pelvis and spine uh, relatively still and to move from the iliofemoral joint, thus assessing hamstring extensibility. Ross, whenever you're ready, show off that amazing hamstring extensibility. And whenever you're ready, reach. All right, okay, so if he holds neutral with his spine, he pulls off a uh, three. Yeah, three, all right, awesome, that's solid, solid work. So, when you look at just hamstring extensibility, if you keep the pelvis still, then that gives you a bit of information, but let's look at what happens if he just lets the spine move, lets the pelvis go where it wants to go, and let's see if that changes. Hoorah, baby. Woo! Went from three up until 13, so a 10-inch difference. So one of the challenges with something like the sit and reach test is there's a high uh, sensitivity to intratestor reliability and a kind of a low sensitivity to intratestor reliability when you're talking about uh, reproducibility of the test. So it can be reproduced when you're looking at uh, tester to tester, but one of the bigger challenges is more the validity and there's a really high uh, rate of uh, sensitivity to it and a low rate of specificity. So meaning that I can tell how far Ross can reach, but it doesn't really tell us what we're assessing other than how far it can go. Common mistakes is the knees will flex, the spine will move excessively, and there will be a change in the sacral angle. So the sit and reach test, although it's reproducible and it does tell you how far someone can reach, it doesn't tell you exactly where the movement's coming from. In a human movements paradigm, Ross, if you just do the one where you allow everything to move, many times people don't move well enough from the hip joint and they overcompensate throughout the spine. They have a restricted thoracic spine, they have excessive mobility of the lumbar spine, and then you can imagine all the stress and strain that's going through the intervertebral disc. So the sit and reach test, um, there's a little bit of a summary on it. Whether it is that you want to use in a group population or in a school environment, there are times and places for everything. But the question comes down to is what exactly is it measuring? And it's definitely not an assessment for extensibility of a specific muscle. So, so my buddy Ross, I'm Eric Beard. Thanks for watching. Come try out our uh, ancient sit and reese test here at the Longfellow Sports Club.